Ottawa has a, Ottawa has a real history of, of uh, being a real good hockey town. As most Canadian most Canadian citizens do it. Well, you, you go back to well the 2017 run by the by the Sens and, and how the passion that was around this this city with the Sens and and the big league club being able to do so well on a big scale. Well, your buzz always comes when you have when you have a winning team. And uh, you know, we, we took a young group last year, the young group, but uh, they battled. Well, knew everything for the Ottawa 67s. You see the Sens take a, a downhill turn after 2017. Now they're starting to rebound. And to be able to potentially have both on the rise at the same time, it's an exciting time for both hockey teams in this city. There's an opportunity to do something special over the next few years. Kind of like be like being lost downtown New York City. There's traffic. There's horns. You know. There's just a just a, a whole lot of noise. I can't even put myself in that position to be able to to imagine what it's like on the ice. And anything I would would be not not even close to reality. Everything happens so fast out there. It is. I guess it is like war sometimes. Waking up at 6 a.m. four times a week to come into practice. It can. It can weigh on you. It might be kind of shocking to them, like what we actually go through. And One, two, three, five! I mean, hockey in, in so many ways is, a, is an escape from, you know, everyday life. day one of 2022 training camp. The start of what looks like an exciting season ahead with a familiar face at the reins. Yeah, it, it's exciting. Uh, I, last year I came in, I knew no player. Uh, I mean, I hadn't even been in the country for three years. I didn't know any guy's names, didn't recognize him, call him by name right off the hop. So it's just so much more of a comfortable level for me now. Uh, they've spent a year with these guys, they know them personally. Uh, to be able to call him by name. Yeah. <laughs> I had to call Jerry midsummer because I was like, dude, you aren't skating enough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, what are you doing? Yeah, I was like, I haven't been skating <laughs> hours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think just the vibe around training camp right now, it's the, it's the first training camp we've had in some time where players are, you know, have been filtering back to the city and there's a social element to it and we're not, uh, um, you know, under mask mandates or, or isolating from one another. So there's a real energy heading into this training camp that, you know, the, the, we're back. Well, there's a couple of phases, you know, the, our job as management is to bring in the, you know, the players and the scouting staff does an excellent job of doing that. But ultimately the decisions are made by the coaching staff. We provide them with as much feedback as possible, uh, you know, in a dossier on the players that are coming in. But really we're looking for those players who have made great improvements in the off season. So there's always a push, um, you know, from players that are coming in, both draft picks, free agents, uh, you know, who are pushing for spots on the team, and those top players to cement their time, place on the team, and battle for ice time. And really, it's a battle for ice time throughout the year, an internal competition, which is healthy, but that starts the first day of training camp. Yep. All the way, all the way, yep. all the way. Yeah. Good job. Thanks. The phone. Bonjour, Montreal. There was the phone, and there was like the whole stage. So I always looked at the stage, and not on the phone. And she's like, "We can't post that." So relatable. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I did that. Yeah, thing. no, I remember, yeah. I remember that happened. I remember when I was dressed up. Yeah. It was crazy. Right. I kept looking at the stage. Back in my prime. <laughs> For real, it was crazy. Bro. You guys know when you're so tired that your eyes doesn't really work? Yeah, my eyes never work. Like. <laughs> they always like go really like bad and I can't control it. Cool. Good story. Later that night every player and their families were invited to the welcome dinner at Otto's Club.
And to represent the hockey operations department, I'd like to call on Dave Cameron to say a few words. Five minutes. <laughs> Roger said growing up in Ottawa that how much he loved the 67s. Coaching in uh, Toronto St. Mike's, I hated the 67s. <laughs> Seems like every year I met Killer and Bird in the playoffs, and more times than not, it didn't turn out the way I wanted. <laughs> Bordy, nice to know about the mental health number. If that Golden Finland had went in, I think both Bordy and I would have had the mental health number. <laughs> but uh, welcome. If there's any advice I can give you is enjoy it but it's a process. And you can't fast forward the process. You have to put the work in and you have to enjoy the work. If you ask the guys on my team last year, one of the biggest challenges they had was figuring out my sense of humor. <laughs> I, I think I have a great sense of humor, but it's a little off the charts because I'm famous for saying something completely off the rails and not blinking or anything. And they have no idea whether I'm serious, whether it applies to them, or whether it's just an old guy rambling off on a bad day. Uh, enjoy, uh, really looking forward to it, really excited about coming back here and working with this group, and uh, uh, can't wait to get started tomorrow. Thank you very much. Great time, good to see the returning players and uh, the new players really uh, came out to play. It was super competitive out there and uh, it was a really, really fun time on the three on three too, so. Wake up, bud. You hear that? MVP, baby. But you just gotta have fun. Like I learned when I was younger, I was always in my head, like, oh, you gotta get points, you gotta score, you gotta do all this, but uh, I just learned that you gotta have fun and it'll all come naturally to you. Go out there, smile, have a good time with your teammates and everyone will pick you up. <laughs> you got a puck on the back of your net. Come down. Dude, I never did it in my entire life. I never saw a goal like that. Training camp can be fun and relaxed, but it can get competitive very quick. And when it does, emotions run high. Hit me in the face again. I dare you. Hit me in the face again. Hit me in the face again. Do it. Guards. Yeah, well, uh, everybody wants to make this team and they're coming in and they want, they're competitive and uh, they know that if the best chance they have is to, to play with emotion and uh, be competitive and you know, get in the dirty areas and try to win. So Everything happens so fast out there. It is, I guess it is like war sometimes. Yeah, I feel like having like battles within the battle is always good for the team. Like, you're gonna have to battle in other games. Like, preseason, we're gonna have to battle. It's gonna be a battle. So, I feel like if we start now, like, you're just gonna be used to it. And with that pressure always on your back, you're gonna like know what to do. I just want you to f battle me. That's all I want. No, we're not going. I know. Just battle. No one else will. Hit me. Yeah. Yeah, emotions run high out there. Like, you know, it's not personal. It's just a, a way of the game. It's just normal. I feel like on the ice, that's like normal for everyone. Like to chirp, to hit, like, but in the end, we're still brothers at the end of the day. Take him, take him. Switch with him when you can.
Il avance pour des pieds de Cormier qui a revient à Ludo. Tire et goal! Encore une fois, Tristan Ludo qui vient marquer un deuxième pour lui ce soir. Donc son deuxième de la rencontre et ça coïncide avec un changement de gardien oui. pour les 67 d'Ottawa qui amène dans, dans la mêlée Colin McKenzie. When the ice is tilted completely the other way, even in a preseason game, leaders have to step up and be vocal to set the record straight for the regular season. Yeah, the f is that? Seriously, everyone, why the f are we skating off the ice? Congratulate your f goalie. I'll go if we just lost 15 to 1. It's embarrassing. the last game of the preseason. A preseason that hasn't brought Ottawa much success. But the squad has a chance to end it off on a high note, heading into the regular season. The 67s would take a two hour bus ride to Cornwall for a Sunday afternoon face off with the Kingston Frontenacs. Chippy until a late hit on a rookie sparked the 67. Oh! Yeah. Stewie just ran Muse. What are you gonna do, Stewie? Take another stupid penalty. Touch another 06. Go ahead. 
head goal, Stonehouse had a run-in with the former teammate, Alec Belanger, on his very next shift. Shortly after, Thomas Johnston made no mistake with an empty cage. Ending off the preseason with a W sent Ottawa into the regular season feeling confident and with their heads held high, ready for the long season that lies ahead.